If you've ever wondered how digital storage works, then this is the video for you. We're going to review five major digital storage media, how they work, and when and why you might use them. We'll look at hard drives, flash, tape, optical, and DNA. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all of our sponsors on GitHub for making this video and all of the other free resources that we produce possible. To support this work, you'll find a link in the description. Okay, let's dive in. So all digital storage operates using the same basic principle, that data is binary. What you'll learn from this video is that the only thing that differentiates different kinds of storage media is what kind of physics are used for physically storing and reading a zero or a one, or put another way, a yes or a no. Let's apply this to a real world example and dive into our first format. Flash storage definitely plays a huge role in your life, whether or not you're aware of it. Thumb drives, laptops, smartphones, smart TVs, smart refrigerators, essentially any kind of consumer electronics today use flash for storing data. The material that flash uses to record zeros and ones is electricity. If we were to enlarge flash storage, what you would see is essentially a lot of little storage cubbies. And some of these cubbies have electrons inside, and some of them don't. That's it. The way Flash stores a zero or a one is by checking to see if a particular cubby location has electrons in it or if it's empty. That little cubby system, well, that's a transistor. And transistors are the foundation of almost all computing technology. Transistors are how CPUs, GPUs, and countless other types of computer chips work. Flash was just an innovation that figured out a way to use the transistor to store data instead of for processing. As the name suggests, Flash is very, very fast. It also doesn't have any moving parts, so if you need to move some files around portably, Flash is the way to go. You can even get two terabyte flash drives today. If you're building a huge storage system, mixing a bit of flash into your system can really help speed things up and ensure that frequently accessed files are available immediately. One of the downsides of flash, however, is that you can only change its state, electricity or no electricity, a finite number of times before it wears out and it fails. And when it does fail, it does so catastrophically. But the limit is anywhere between 10,000 to 100,000 times. So for many people, this will never be an issue. Flash is unquestionably going to play an increasingly important role in storage as the physics that make it work have a lot of room for growth. So we'll be seeing higher and higher capacities and lower and lower prices, likely at a faster rate than we'll see with other storage media. Hard drives or hard disk storage have been around for a very long time. The first hard disk drive was the size of a refrigerator. Up until very recently, say the past 10 years or so, almost all personal computers used hard drives as their primary storage media. While flash uses electricity as the method of storing ones and zeros, hard drives use magnetism. The inside of a hard drive looks a lot like a record player. There are circular metal disks and an arm which is able to change the magnetic polarity north or south of tiny little locations on the disk. The same mechanism is used to check whether a specific location on the disk is charged north or south. So hard drives store data as magnetic fluctuations. For the time being, hard drives have much higher capacity than flash and are much cheaper. So when you have a lot of stuff you need to store, hard drives typically make sense. These days, when you're building a big storage system, it's typical for most of it to be hard drives. The main downside to hard drives is that first, there are a lot of moving parts that can break. And second, engineers have been really struggling for a while now to cram more and more storage density into hard drives, whereas most other media have a lot of room for growth. Between the physical parts that can break in a hard drive and problems that can happen with their firmware, generally speaking, you would want to think about replacing important hard drives at least every five years. Tape is another medium that uses magnetism. It's much higher capacity than hard drives, but it's also much, much slower. Data tape has been used for a very long time. It's an old idea, but it's still used today in a contemporary form factor that looks like this. A plastic cartridge with a reel of tape inside, not too different from an old videotape. To read or write a data tape, you'll need to have a drive that is compatible with it. Inside the drive, there's a mechanism that does more or less the same thing that goes on inside of a hard drive. It changes the magnetic polarity of a particular location on the data tape to north or south, and it can also read this polarity later. Using data tape makes sense in two potential scenarios. One, let's say you want to back your data up and ship it somewhere safe. Tape is not a bad option for this because it can store a lot of information and it's more affordable than a hard drive, although there is the investment of buying the tape drive itself. 
It also makes sense to use tape when you have a lot of data that you don't need to access frequently. For example, you'll often find tape in big storage systems where 80 to 90% of the data is hardly ever touched. In these systems, the tapes are usually managed by robots. One of the cool things about tape is that when it's not being used, it's completely offline, meaning it isn't actively consuming power. Tapes can break and fail, but what's more risky is their format becoming obsolete. So to avoid headaches, you'll want to think about migrating your tapes at least every five years or so. Optical media refers to formats like CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray. Although most of these formats are now obsolete, Blu-ray is still used today mainly for consumer distribution of movies, and at least one manufacturer sells a proprietary Blu-ray data archiving system. The name optical media refers to the fact that the way formats like Blu-ray store a zero or a one relies upon lasers and optical sensors. Although there are material differences between the discs that you would create at home and ones that are factory produced, like movies, all optical discs share the same basic principle. They store a zero or a one by either being shiny or not shiny. In other words, when you put a disc in a drive, a laser is pointed at the disc. If the laser hits a shiny spot, it bounces back and the sensor sees light. If the laser does not bounce back, the sensor sees darkness. Generally speaking, today the only use for optical media is if you're a cinephile and really like having a physical collection of movies. There is one major manufacturer that does make and sell a data archiving system that looks a lot like tape cartridges and drives, but instead of tape inside the cartridge, there's a stack of Blu-ray discs. There isn't much of an ecosystem of different vendors making and selling these systems though, so we really can't recommend them. Burnable discs also have a short shelf life, so we generally don't recommend optical media for long-term storage. The final medium we'll talk about today is DNA. Yes, you heard me right, DNA. DNA as a storage medium has been around as long as life itself. It's the code that defines all living creatures on Earth and is the method that nature chose to transfer and store data. For decades now, scientists have been able to read and create synthetic DNA, and it is now becoming viable as an option for the storage of digital information. So what does this mean? DNA is composed of four kinds of molecules known as nucleotides, referred to as G, A, T, and C. Thanks to genetic research, we are able to not only read sequences of DNA, but we can also create and assemble them. As we've talked about in this video, all you need for digital storage is a way to record a material state change and a way to read it back. Electrons or no electrons, north or south light or darkness. DNA provides this ability. You take the binary ones and zeros, convert them to G, A, T, and C, and use a DNA synthesizer to create liquid DNA, which is then typically dehydrated and stored in an inert state. How and where this is kept physically varies depending on what vendor you're working with. To read this again, you just rehydrate the DNA and put it back in a sequencer. The hardware and the science used for this is precisely the same methods that are used for scientific research. DNA can be thought of as an archival storage format, similar to how we use data tape today. You would only store things on DNA that you wanted to keep for a very, very long time and that you don't anticipate needing access to. Think of it as your disaster backup. Now, there are a lot of great things about DNA storage. First is that it lasts a very long time, around 300,000 years or so. Second, it doesn't need any kind of special environmental conditions. You could just store it on your bookshelf at home. Third, it's very small. We're talking about molecular level. Think of it this way. You could store all of the world's information in a shoebox. The amount of data that you could store on a business card would take 1,000 hard drives to store. The most important thing about DNA, however, is that you'll always be able to read it, no matter what vendor you work with, because fundamentally, it's not a human invention, it's found in nature. Today, DNA storage is pretty expensive, so it really only makes sense to use if you have small amounts of data that are either very important or very valuable. But the science and technology behind DNA synthesis is constantly improving and prices are projected to fall. So in a few years, it should be just about as cost effective as the other forms of storage we've talked about. So in conclusion, let's review. If you need very fast storage, use flash. If you need to store a lot of stuff and you want it accessible, use disk. If you have a lot of stuff and don't need things immediately accessible, use tape. Just don't use optical. And if you have small amounts of invaluable data that you want to last forever, use DNA. If you're using any of the other storage media, don't forget to refresh your storage media. Replace your flash, hard drive, or tape at least every five years or so. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you saw, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe.